Hi guys, welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. If you're here for the very first time, please do well to subscribe to this channel because on a regular basis, I post updates in relation to monitoring and evaluation. Today, we'll be looking at monitoring and evaluation manager interview questions, okay? And I want to say that uh, of late, I've been receiving a lot of emails from different people around the world who have actually been asking me how can they win an interview. And I, interestingly enough, many of them have been selected for manager interviews, okay? So I thought maybe this is something I should touch on so that in case in future somebody uh, wants to get to know more about how best they can win an interview, it can be good for you to watch this video. But also, I just wanted to say that um, I want to thank all my friends who've been writing to me. You know, I had a certain predicament over the weekend, and uh, it's been good that I have gotten a lot of encouragement from many friends. So I want to take this opportunity to thank many of my friends who've been writing to me to encourage me in these difficult times. Okay, so let's get started. My name is Coach Alexander. I've been doing this for 10 years now. If you're here for the very first time, this is what I do. This is what I love. In case you don't know this, but we've been uh, selling uh, branded T-shirts and face masks. And this is all in an effort to keep us going, to keep us living. So if you want to support this channel in a whole different way, please, in the link in the description below, there's a link that takes you to this site where you can purchase uh, face masks and t-shirts that have been branded by M&D Made Simple. If you want to get these books for free, please do uh, to uh, download them. They're in the description below. I've left the link. They are totally free. And I have this course on Udemy, uh, how to set up a monitoring and evaluation system step by step. It is a very wonderful course. I have to say this is my best course and I want you to enroll in it if you have the time to. Okay, so as usual, this video is quite long, so but please take full advantage of the timestamps below, okay? So without wasting much time, let's get straight into business. So first of all, I want us to first understand who is a monitoring and evaluation manager, okay? Because... I guess sometimes we don't really get to understand why they are even there. Some people may not fully understand why do we need a manager? Why do we need a coordinator? Okay, so who is a manager really? A monitoring and evaluation manager is a person responsible for controlling or administering a group of M&D staff. Okay, so I like to think of a manager as somebody who is the m and champion of that organization. And when I say an m and champion, I'm talking about a person who really loves m and &E and is able to sell it to people. You can take them to any forum. You can take them to even a group of people who don't like m and &E, But this m and champion, this manager is going to sell the m and idea to these people and they're going to end up liking what they are hearing, okay? I, I, I sometimes think of myself as a manager because I've inspired quite an, a lot of people. And that's why I, I always say that M&D managers are inspiring. You see, because just come to, just think about it. Why would you want to be led by somebody who is always making you feel bad? He's always blasting at you each time you make a small mistake at work. And I'm I'm talking I'm genuinely speaking about small mistakes because even typos on a document can get somebody blasted. And I mean that's that's not right, you see. But with an MND manager, this is somebody who is reasonable, who is hardworking, and has that technical capacity in MD. So if we're talking, if we have a group of five MD specialists or professionals. I feel that the person that scores that has that scores the highest among those five in terms of M and D understanding qualifies to be a manager. But that's not really the point. But this person 
really needs to have that management skills, okay? So the thing is that when you look at an M&D manager, think of him as an officer, but with added responsibility, with added responsibility. So what this means is that this person has to do some administrative work, has to do some mentoring work, has to do perhaps uh, play a leadership role. So you can imagine that, for instance, if in the team people don't know certain concepts, they need to go to somebody, they need to look up to somebody, they need to look up to someone who inspires them, such that, you know, even if this person doesn't, I mean, you you know, even if you don't really need to call him a manager, but you just it just automatically happens because this person is really a leader. He's able to drive the process. He's able to motivate people. He's able to, he or she rather, is able to change things, change their mindset, lead by example, you know. And I think that that's really what leadership is. It's not it's not about you. All, all of a sudden, when you get promoted to a manager, you start shouting at people. No, that's not what being a manager is. So now, you need to ask yourself this question. You know, do you have what it takes to be a manager? Do you have what it takes to lead? Because leading means that uh, you have to go the extra mile. And I like to see, I, I see this a lot, and I think it's good. You see the people who are directors, managers, they'll, they'll tend to work more hours than their subordinates because they are trying to um, beat some deadlines. They're trying to do the work so that at the end of the day, everything is brought to, to normal. All right, so now there are seven M&D manager interview questions that I want us to talk about, okay? So if you've been selected for an interview, I need to let you know this, that um, the interview, this management interview question is designed not really to, okay, of course it's designed to assess your technical capacity, but they also need to understand whether you have that management is management or leadership in you. Okay, so you need to go into the interview not memorizing stuff to do with monitoring and evaluation from textbooks because that's not really what the interview is going to be 100% about. It's a combination of things and you need to be free, you need to be composed. It's really important that you understand that they are looking for somebody who's also going to take care of other staff members, okay? Because, you know, one of the things we tend to forget is that when you become a manager, you are, you are leading a set of people. So those people, they can actually turn against you because they are not feeling inspired. And forgive me if I'm using this word inspired a lot, because I, I believe that that's what it should be. You know, a leader needs to inspire you in the organization and not make you feel like, oh, this person is just there because they just found themselves there, but they, they, they shouldn't actually be in that position. Okay, so there are seven M&D manager interview questions that I want us to discuss, and I'll give you some tips on how to answer them. The most common one, tell us a bit about yourself. This one never fails. And uh, what, what works really well is that if you're able to tell them about yourself over the past few years, if you've been holding different management positions, in the past years, that is going to help a lot. And if you haven't held any management positions in the past, that is not a bad thing because you are just beginning. I mean, the interview panel already know that you are perhaps looking for an opportunity for added responsibility. So you have to convince them actually 
that you have what it takes to to lead so you may want to pick on some items in your career where you showed some leadership all right and perhaps maybe if i'll give you an example if you were a consultant if you did a consultancy somewhere were you the lead consultant or if you did a training somewhere were you the lead trainer okay so those are interesting points maybe you want to think about because it may show indica indications that you are actually a leader but even even at school or college if you were president of an association or chairman you know of a board or something like that that can be good to add but i can tell you that even if you don't have a very rich cv on leadership what they're interested to know is whether you you actually have that understanding of how this is done okay so that's question one okay so question two is how do you motivate your team all right and personally i have been um, I have been supervised before, okay? And I'm sure it's the same with you. Now, let me ask you this question. How does it feel when your supervisor actually motivates you? Okay? It's like a it's like a it's like breathing fresh air, all right? So, you need to understand that um, when you're answering this question, you need to understand where they're coming from. They want their team to be working hard, even if there are challenges, because everybody goes through challenges. You've got employees who have financial challenges, family challenges, uh, perhaps it could be even sicknesses, okay? But how do you keep them motivated? So, you know, you need to answer this question in such a way that um, you, you come out with initiatives of how you can motivate your team. So take, for instance, uh, you, you, you might want to consider telling the panel that, well, that's a very good question. Uh, to keep the team motivated, you need to perhaps set realistic targets because when you set realistic targets for the team, they, they they will believe in themselves that they can actually achieve those targets but if you set unrealistic targets for your team it will also it will be a demotivating factor also you want to as a manager I'll take that initiative to encourage them especially when it's due all right because i don't know what it is with our leaders sometimes they they don't think it's good to to commend their staff. And that's very sad because most of the time, I like in my work experience, many of the leaders, they'll, they'll, just, uh, they'll just give you negative energy. And that is what demotivates, even when you work so hard, okay? So if a person is hardworking, commend them. And if, they're, if they've been performing and reaching their targets, give them the grade they deserve in their performance appraisal you know because uh, it's not fair to to make them feel like they are not even doing anything at all all right so that's one way you can you can try to talk about this issue with your with the panel okay then the another thing is how do you handle stress so one of the one of the things about this management function is that um, it's, it requires a lot of your time and hard work. So, for instance, I can give you a good example. If you have five projects, your organization, if your organization is running five projects, each of those projects have M&D officers. So, as a manager, you'll be getting these reports from five different officers. And these are five different projects. And for all these projects, you have to make sense out of it. So that can be an, an area where you can get you can you can get some you can get stressed. Okay. So to handle stress, the question is how do you handle 
that stress all right so you can answer this question by i usually like to start my answers by saying okay that's a very good question okay thanks for that and uh, thanks for asking that because the truth of the matter is that stress is unavoidable but to handle that stress one of the ways i've seen worked for me is to to get plenty of rest okay but also not to not to be too because perhaps you can say you welcome you can say you welcome stress because it's a normal part of life but i don't overreact to it i handle it by controlling my emotions by getting plenty of rest and also taking time to if if things are overwhelming sometimes it's not a bad thing to delegate responsibility all right so you can try to to be a bit creative on how you answer some of these questions okay so that's question 3 then question 4 if you are employed as manager what will you bring to the organization very important question guys so one one tip i can give you is that um before you go you go for this interview with the organization try to establish what is it they currently have okay and you can get this information from their website usually they, these organizations have websites so you can get this information there and if for instance you have a feeling that they don't have a digitalized m and d system you can actually tell them that i have experience in developing m and d systems and i would want to recommend to you a solution that can actually improve efficiency for your organization and effectiveness so management information systems is key and i want to tell you guys that um i always talk about april there's going to be a video i'll be releasing i think maybe tomorrow or the other day i have set a date this is official when i'm going to introduce to you the system the m and d system online system that i think you should be using as organization or individuals okay so that's question four guys so be creative try to try to play around with words okay so how will you identify m and d training needs for staff all right so when you have a question like this sometimes the reason why they are asking this question is because they want a manager that's going to be training their staff because they don't really want to be hiring people to do the training they need somebody in-house okay because of course it could be expensive so again here they are trying to understand to assess whether you know the process of identifying the training needs okay so most most times you you might find yourself just answering this question as if it's a yes no answer they ask you how will you identify m and d training needs and all you say a needs assessment and it ends there but i don't think that's how you should answer it no that's very bad answering what you need to do is you say okay the first step is to do an, an m and d needs assessment or capacity building assessment and then you you explain further i i know of a tool that i've been using even in the organization that i came from i know of a tool which i think can be helpful in determining the training needs of this organization all right so you try to be creative you try to you know because if you just if you just answer things as if it's a yes no question they won't get to really know you they won't get to understand your full potential what what are you really made of what substance is in him okay so that's another way you can answer it okay this is one of my favorite okay how will you manage conflict yeah so this is conflict management guys uh can you think of a time when you actually had a difference with one of your staff members in the organization 
yeah so this is why it's it's essential to to this question is always important because conflict will always be there in the organization it could be conflict between uh, fellow subordinates or it could be conflict between a subordinate and even a manager or even a director so you you need to be able to answer this question in such a way that you actually know how the conflict management process is one one way i can recommend you of course i would i would ask you maybe to do some research and read but i would recommend that this is how i would answer it i would start by saying it's it's a good question because most organizations are around the world i can't think of any organization that doesn't have conflict situations so one of the best ways to handle conflict is to privately talk to the offended party and try to iron out any differences okay so if it is conflict between me and another individual subordinate we sit down and we try to iron this issue uh, to get to collectively if it's between two different um, people you i can become i can be the mediator to try and resolve this this uh, this situation okay so that it doesn't escalate because if a conflict ex ex escalates it can create a potential wildfire to the organization so you, you know you you i i guess you understand what i'm saying uh, friend right so the issue is that the first step you need to do is sit somebody down if that fails then you need to get a, a a person higher than you and the three of you can sit down to resolve a situation so really it's dialogue that is what uh, that is what you should emphasize to the interview panel it's really dialogue how do you uh, uh, sit down with other parties and try to resolve this in a respectful manner then finally describe your management style this is a question that is uh, quite interesting and also quite broad so they just want to get to understand it's easy it's easier for somebody who's had experience in being a manager for for many years but for somebody who is just in, trying to enter the management field it can be quite challenging so describe your management style okay so really you just tell them about how you feel you are going to deliver what is it about yourself that makes you different from anybody else so your management style is that of achieving results being results oriented and not being afraid to take up new challenges okay your management style is that of commending subordinates where it's due okay also your other style is that of not being afraid to be firm on issues that need attention okay to be fair but firm so you know when you say those kind of qualities they get us the interview panel will get a sense that really you understand this concept very well okay so i would urge you to friends to research more on this topic okay so guys uh like i earlier mentioned april is just a few days from now and i'll be announcing the date when we are going to have real fun with a new system m and d system that's coming on the market okay so i want you guys to be fully on board on this new system this new technology which some wonderful developers have come up with so until we meet again i've been your host coach alexander and see you on the other side bye